Talk to me, I guess, about what we experienced here in Rhode Island this morning. Right, so around 10.30 this morning, there was a magnitude 4.8 earthquake in New Jersey. And the strongest felting, the strongest shaking was felt in New Jersey near the epicenter of the earthquake. But some people in Rhode Island and Massachusetts and Connecticut have also felt shaking. Um, did you feel anything yourself? I did not feel anything, but other people that I work with did feel something. How common is something like this um, for this to happen here in Rhode Island? It's pretty unusual. Most earthquakes occur at tectonic plate boundaries. Like the San Andreas in California is a great example of earthquakes that occur at the boundary between the North American tectonic plate and the Pacific tectonic plate. Here on the east coast of the US, we are not near a tectonic plate boundary. So it's unusual for us to have earthquakes, but it's not unheard of. It's just that most of the time they happen, they're smaller than the one that happened this morning. How significant, I guess, is a 4.7? It is, it is the largest earthquake that we have recorded with modern instruments in that part of the US. So um, in 2011, there was a magnitude 5.8 earthquake in Virginia. So that's obviously a little bit bigger than this one, but that was also somewhat unusual. But small earthquakes, magnitude ones or magnitude twos around here are not that uncommon. Why do you think um, we are starting to see earthquakes on this side of the country? Yeah, there's earthquakes occur all up and down the east coast of the US, typically small, magnitude one, magnitude two, even though we're not near a tectonic plate boundary. And scientists don't entirely understand why. Typically, these earthquakes are occurring on faults that previously existed. So the earthquakes are reactivating ancient faults that may have been formed millions of years ago by periods when continents collided with each other or broke up with each other. But what forces are actually reactivating those faults right now to cause those earthquakes? There are several candidate options, but there's no consensus on what's causing them. Okay. Um, anything else you wanted to add about today or think is important to know? So there is some chance of an aftershock. Aftershocks are earthquakes that occur after the main shock and are smaller than the main shock. So the largest aftershock might be about a one magnitude unit lower than the original one. So the USGS, the US Geological Survey estimates that we might expect an aftershock of a magnitude three or, or four in the next week, but that's about it. Is there anything people should do to prepare for that or you just kind of let it happen. If you feel strong shaking, then cover your head and go underneath a table or go to a doorway. Go somewhere where if something were to fall from a shelf or a light fixture were to fall from the ceiling, it wouldn't fall on your head and injure you. Is this a sign that you think we could start to see more earthquakes here on the East Coast? I don't think so. I think we see earthquakes of this size once a decade or a little bit less than that. So uh, no, I, I don't think it's a sign that seismic activity is, is picking up, but it's certainly interesting when it happens. Absolutely.